Hey everybody, Ben here from Cinderblock Studios, and today we're talking about paintbrushes. Natural hair versus synthetic hair. What are their similarities, what are their differences, and why should you care? That and more coming up. So regardless of the medium, oil, acrylic, watercolors, there's always two different types of brushes. Natural and synthetic hairs. Both come in soft and stiff varieties depending on which fibers are used, and both come in a variety of sizes and shapes for any needed application. So let's look at natural hair bristles first. What are natural hair bristles? What do you mean by natural hair? Well, a hair that comes from an animal. Now I know what some of you are thinking, that's probably cruel and inhumane and they just harvest, they shave all these animals? No. In most cases, no. Uh, usually, the hair they're getting is from byproducts from other industries. So if you're conscious about the treatment of animals, don't worry about it. Brush companies don't mistreat their animals. Now there's lots of different common hairs that are used in making paintbrushes. These are a few of them. There are more than that, but those are the most common type. And it should be noted here that bristle is going to be the sort of cheapest of that set. Natural hair brushes are great if you're using oil paints in particular because the oils in oil paints will condition the hairs of the bristle bristles to remain either soft or stiff as they need to. Extra soft natural hair bristles like Squirrel are actually really great for watercolors, in particular because they tend to hold a ton of water and just be able to really kind of soak a page for great wet on wet techniques. Plus for a watercolor scenario, using more natural hair bristles will usually mean that those brushes are gonna last pretty much forever. Now what about my favorite paints, acrylics? Well, for a natural hairbrush, they actually don't go super well together. An acrylic paint is going to be harder uh, on your brushes in general, but specifically be much harder on a natural hairbrush. For this reason, most artists will choose synthetic when using with acrylics, especially too because a acrylic paint tends to kind of clog into your brush a little bit, and that clog happens a lot faster with those natural hairbrushes. Now in general, if you are looking for a brush that's going to be great for impasto painting, showing thick, unique brush strokes, generally speaking, those natural hair uh, brushes are going to be the ones that do that the best. Natural hair brushes also have a really great shape retention, uh, so they, we don't have to worry about them really splaying out over time. However, you know, it happens with every brush, but uh, some, uh, synthetic brushes do have that tendency to splay out a lot faster. The only real downside to the natural hair brushes, though, is that they're kind of expensive. Okay, so let's talk synthetics now. Synthetics are generally designed to mimic the natural hair of natural hair brushes. They're usually made with nylon or polyester, or in a mixed synthetic brush, both. For acrylics, synthetics are usually your main brush to go for. Compared to a natural hair brush, at least for acrylic use, they tend to hold and release a lot more paint. Now, while you can use a natural hair brush for both oils and acrylics, generally speaking, if you're using oil paint, you don't want to use synthetic brushes with oil paints. Biggest reason is the oils will actually damage some of the synthetic bristles and in general just kind of destroy your brushes in a very short period of time. Now, synthetics for watercolors, to me, are a really good mid-range uh, option. Specifically, a nicer quality of synthetic for watercolors gets you that right price point while still getting something that will last both a long time or a short time depending on how you use it. So for synthetic hair brushes for watercolors and acrylics, it's gonna be a lot more cost effective to get, say, a cheaper brush that's synthetic and it'll just last you a little bit longer for, again, your acrylics or your watercolors. Now, while a lot of natural hair brushes are going to show those brush strokes, a lot of synthetic brushes will show little to no brush strokes. So if you're worried about having that extra bit of texture in your piece, try out a synthetic brush. Now you might be thinking, wait, why would I not want my brushes to show brush marks? I thought that was kind of a good thing, it shows complexity in the painting. Well, if you're varnishing a, a painting with a brush, you don't want to have brush marks. That's all you really need to worry about. On the downside though, when we talked about shape retention before and how good that shape retention was for natural hair brushes, for synthetic brushes, that shape retention, not so good. Uh, specifically, if you leave your brushes in water a lot, whether that be with acrylics or with watercolors, 
actually more specifically with watercolors, since you're probably going to be leaving your brush in water a lot more often. Uh, that shape retention over time, even in the short term, is going to not hold quite as well. You're going to start seeing your, your bristles splaying out more and more and more to where a flat brush that used to look like this looks like this. However, it should be noted that as your brushes change over time, the application of what you use that brush for will change as well. So don't think that just because your brush is changing shape that it's no good anymore. It just changes how you use it. And while buying a cheaper synthetic brush can be more cost effective, you are going to be buying those brushes a little bit more often. So now for the big question that I'm sure all of you are asking yourself. Which one, natural or synthetic, should I use? And does it matter? Now once you choose your specific paint, oil, acrylic, watercolor, or some other alternative paint, it's important to do your research first. Hopefully this video will have helped with that. You should also avoid cross-medium brushes. Use your oil brushes for your oil paint, use your watercolor brushes for your watercolor paint, and use your acrylic brushes for your acrylic paint. Switching that up between medium and between project will often damage your brushes and sometimes damage your artwork as well. Now because this channel is very acrylic painter focused, I would be doing you a disservice if I didn't talk at least about a couple of brush brands that I recommend. Uh, first off, off the Utrecht Maglin series. I uh, highly recommend this brush. Super soft bristles, but also have a nice snap to them. Really hold their point uh, very well over time, uh, which is rare with a synthetic brush, as we've talked about before. But generally, generally speaking, I love these brushes. I've been using them since high school. Also, Blick and Utrecht Master Series brushes. These are going to be, on the terms of synthetics, kind of on the top end of your price range, but I highly recommend it. So these are some of the best brushes I've ever used in my life. And if you live outside of the U.S., you're probably not going get, to be getting anything uh, Utrecht or Blick. So I have to uh, suggest some Liquitex Freestyle brushes. You can buy these directly on Liquitex's website, and uh, I highly recommend trying them out. Uh, some of, also, again, some of the best brushes ever, I've ever used. Uh, really kind of hold the paint uh, really well, but aren't afraid to let it back out onto your canvas. These uh, green ones in particular are designed to be used uh, on mural painting, but they also work, also work really, really well on canvas. So natural brushes, synthetic brushes, a combination of both. Which one do you use? Let me know in the comments below. Also, if you learned anything in this video, hit the like button, get subscribed if you're not already, and this has been from Cinderblock Studios. See you guys next time.